The Cologne Association has quite a long history. It was active for over 90 years. It was originally formed as the Aberdeer Steam Collar Association in 1864, and over a period of years went through many changes and reconstructions. The association expanded to include collieries in the Rhondda Valleys in 1870, and then changed its name to the South Wales Steam Collieries Association. It then formed a coalition with the Iron Masters in 1873, and was renamed the Monmouthshire and South Wales Collieries Association. And the association was reconstructed again in 1880, and in 1890 was renamed the Monmouthshire and South Wales Colonners Association, remaining active under that name until 1955. When the coal industry was nationalized in 1947, the association remained active for a short period while it wound down its activities. Eventually, this would include arranging for the transfer of its business records to the National Library of Wales. The bulk of these came to the library in three separate deposits from the 1940s and 50s. Some listing work and cataloging work was carried out in the 1950s, and this was done jointly by staff at the National Library and staff in the Department of Economics at the University College of Wales in Aberystwyth. Further cataloging work on the collection was done in the 1980s, but this covered only about one third of the archive and was never fully completed. The result was that for many years, only part of the collection has been cataloged in any detail, and large parts of the archive have remained inaccessible and forgotten and feared. <laughs> but recently it was decided that owing to the importance and potential research value of the collection, the entire archive should be fully cataloged. And this took some time to accomplish due to the somewhat daunting size of the collection. And I've attempted to show just how extensive it is, hard to do. It occupies 11 bays of shelving and measures just over 13 cubic meters and is packaged into 1,072 boxes. So what's in the collection? Business records. And these are mainly from key departments of the organization and from the offices of some of the <coughs> chief officers. Records of the commercial, financial, transport, disputes, and statistics departments. Basically the range of material that you would expect to find in an organization of this type, but in large and sometimes overwhelming quantities. The types of records include deeds of association, minute books of association committees, and minutes and papers of the three association district boards, a large series of administrative files, account journals and ledgers, verbatim minutes of proceedings and other papers of the Board of Conciliation for the Coal Trade of Monmouthshire and South Wales, disputes books and files, bound collections of circulars, press cuttings, and scrapbooks, and these are quite extensive, statistics, legal reports and judgments, and other records of court proceedings, a wide range of printed material, including government publications and reports and research papers, and reports and technical notes produced by various industry-related groups and organizations. In addition, there are photographs, including over 60 framed photographic portraits of chairmen of the Coal Owners Association. I should point out that records of individual coal mines or companies are not part of this collection. And similarly, there are no personnel files as such about individual miners or miners from a particular colliery uh, in the columns collection. As you can see from this list, there's quite a wide range of material in the collection. It's too large to examine in any great detail, so I will be giving a general overview of the records, pointing out the major record series and the type of information they contain, and looking at a few of the more atypical records um, in a bit more detail. So let's look at the administrative records first. These include minute books of the Colors Association and its district boards, and for an astonishing number of committees, and a lot of administrative files. The general minute books span more or less the entire period that the uh, association was in existence, and they cover general meetings, special meetings, annual meetings, and meetings of the council. They record decisions made concerning the business activities of the association, for example, <laughs> the negotiations leading to the formation of the Coal Owners Association, the division of the coal field into its separate districts, Cardiff, Newport, and Swansea, each with its separate board, consideration and providing comments on district board and committee reports, decisions on whether or not to give support to individual members, and this was referring to financial support or compensation following work stoppages or strikes at collieries, 
um, discussions and resolutions reflecting their policy on issues such as wage rate changes and strikes, conciliation board rulings, etc. Um, they record decisions on the policy to be adopted toward government bills and acts affecting the mining interest. And domestic concerns are also mentioned, such as the approval of applications by collar companies for membership in the association and other matters concerning members and officers. These could be appointments and resignations, cases of illness uh, or death. And there are minutes for the district boards as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the coal field was divided into three districts, Cardiff, Newport, and Swansea. And so the board's activities were similar to those recorded in the general minute books, but obviously carried out over a particular geographic area. The Coal Owners Collection also contains a substantial group of records of the Board of Conciliation for the Coal Trade of Monmouthshire and South Wales. And the conciliation boards were established to determine the general rate of wages to be paid to workmen and to deal with disputes uh, of the various collieries. And representatives of the Coal Owners Association would meet with representatives of various sections of workmen to discuss and resolve problems. And the records we have here are minutes of proceedings agreements and awards. I'd like to note that the minutes are actually verbatim minutes, and so they're an accurate record of the actual discussions and arguments which took place. And in reading them, you have a real sense of being present at the meetings, which I thought added a bit more context to them, made them a bit easier to read. Agreements and awards are, of course, the formal documents which set out the terms and rules of procedure regarding whatever issues were discussed and agreed to. And these would include names of both the owners and the workmen's representatives um, who are responsible for negotiating the agreement. And then we also have records of the many committees that were set up under the Coal Owners Association, um, in fact, 26 of them. And these are mostly minutes of meetings, but sometimes you may find agendas and related papers included. And I will go through these quickly. Um, the minutes cover a, a diverse range of activities ranging from the immediate business concerns of the association, so finance, transport, commercial, and joint coal production committees. Um, they range to activities, uh, research and education. So there's a coal dust research committee, a general research committee, and education committees. And to legislation affecting the coal trade. So parliamentary bills committee, eight hours committee, and coal mines act committees. The Coal Owners Association also represented, um, was also represented on several committees of the Mining Association of Great Britain. And so there are minutes from those in the Coal Owners Collection as well. Just to run through them, these are the committees that they were represented on. There's also a large series of administrative files in the collection, files that were created and kept by the commercial department of the Coal Owners Association. As the name suggests, the department dealt mainly with the commercial aspects of coal mining. So we find that the files from this section reflect that. They concern the maintenance and use of railway wagons for coal transport. So this covers maintenance and repair, wagon pooling, and the wartime requisitioning of private collier wagons. The negotiation of special railway rates and dock charges for the transport and shipping of coal. The negotiation with foreign countries for the exchange of Welsh coals for pitwood prior to and during the Second World War. Transportation of coal by rail and by ship, coordination of road and rail services, and um, loading of coal and special machinery at docks, and representation in the Mining Association, as I've said. 